Hello and welcome back to the only Aki preview for this weekend's game against Air United. Now, before we get to that, there's been some transfer, there's been a transfer rumor that we're going to talk about, but we just want to go over what we spoke about on our last podcast, our tra- January transfer special. We're now going into the last week of the window, and we didn't have a game at the weekend, and we heard absolutely nothing, no peeps whatsoever. Brandon, is there anything specifically you want to mention regarding our last podcast and just highlighting that again? The main part that we, we just sort of need to emphasise there's, there's positions that we really need to bring in and if we, we want to secure safety in, in the championship for this season and then we want to sort of build on that and we want to sort of do this process in which Taylor's talking about um, about sort of progressing next season fighting for the playoffs and fighting to get back in the, the SPL where the club say we feel we belong now it's important that we start planning properly, we bring in the right player. We need to be active in this coming next week. Uh, obviously, it's sort of been a week since we've done that uh, podcast and over the, the weekend there, we didn't have a game. So we think it was perfect, sort of a perfect opportunity for the club behind the scenes to be sort of working sort of tirelessly because there isn't any games to sort of get players in in the positions that we're desperately needing. We've not heard that peep, but it's I think it's just imperative that we get both a right back and striker is what we really, really need. Obviously it'd be ideal if the club are also looking for the future, but if we want to stay in this division because it's a lot closer than what we think it is, um, a right back and a striker and even a midfield general if you want to add that in as well. But right back and strikers and pair it off before this window ends and um, I fingers crossed we can get that in. So the Aki's have just announced the signing of fullback Stephen Lawson, previously of Livingston. From what we've seen on social media, absolutely glowing reports from the Livingston supporters who are, appear to be devastated when he left um, at the end of last season. He has been without a club since then, but um, if if we know Hamilton, he's probably been in for a couple of weeks at least training. Um, they did say in the report that he, he would be in contention to play on Saturday, so you'll find that he, fitness probably won't be a problem. Um, from what we've read from Livingston fans, he's known for his fitness, his um, work rate and desire and his commitment. From what we've read, we've got a real player on our hands. Someone I'll, I'll admit I'm not too familiar with, I, I know of him, and I, I definitely have seen glowing reports in the past for his performances. Um, but this one is quite exciting. Um, I think it's a guy, again, with huge potential. We saw when we got Haki Madoffin from Livingston that he hadn't really done too much um, at Livingston. And when he came to us, he, he went on to the next level. Um, I'm hoping we can see that from Lawson. Um, he's, again, I think he's more of an attacking fullback. So it would be nice to see us adapt our game for that again. Because um, I think it really suited us when we had uh, Aaron McGowan there. Um, and it's something we've said in previous podcasts that we'd love to see is kind of head back towards. Um, and I think the kind of experience of Scottish football, um, the, like I say, the fitness and the fact he does like to get forward, I think you'll see everything that we were feel that we were missing with Matheson in the early on the season. So, yeah, I think this is a really promising signing. He's still a good age. There's huge bags of potential um, by the looks of it. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with this one. So as, as David's just said, Aki's announcing the signing of Steve Lawson as a free agent. He fills that void in right back that we've been talking about for a long time uh, and it allows Jamie Hamilton to move back into his natural position in centre back as well. So overall, I'm, I'm very happy about it. Um, he's got some very impressive YouTube highlights uh, if you want to go have a look at them. But obviously YouTube highlights, we know as Aki's fans, are not the be-all be and end-all of a player. But um they're very impressive, and the response from Levy fans has been incredible. A lot of Levy fans saying they would take him back right now. Um, Joe Sked, for a view for the Terrace quote, tweeted us and said that he's surprised a Premiership club never picked him up. So he's being highly rated, and I'm I'm really excited to see kind of how, how he is. The first text I got when it was announced was from one of the boys from the Talk Levy podcast, the Livingston fan podcast, saying, look after our Toggle Prince. So they absolutely love him. Uh, he's very versatile, he can play a right back and along the midfield as well. He's very attacking is what I can the sense I get from him. So let's hope we can kind of recreate what we did with Aaron McGowan and have two very attacking fullbacks, Keenan McDonald uh, and now Steve Lawson. Um, and as I said, it allows us to move Jamie Hamilton back into centre-back, which is personally his, his best position in my opinion. Um, so it fills that void as well. I'm very happy with this. Um, hats off to the club 
doesn't mean we still don't need players in. Obviously, a striker, a, a midfielder, uh, and if we can get uh, Callum Morrison in as well, uh, which we'll talk about in a second, that would be excellent. So, really, really happy with this signing. Um, hopefully, there's still a few more to come, but overall, happy with this. And, uh, yeah, let's, I can't wait to see him get started. Hopefully, he kicks on and gives us the same level of performances he was giving Livingston. It's one that's, I think it's caught every Aki's fan off guard. It's been well documented which players we've been expecting to sign. We've obviously spoke about Morrison, Mark and Roy being another one. It just came from nowhere, really. Um, a right back is a position we've clearly stated we really need, even when we had Matheson in the team. Uh, it was a position we thought we could strengthen. I didn't expect us to actually bring one in. So hat, hats off, I have to go to the club for this one because um, it's a right back that, although he's not played, since um, the summer, he's, he's, he's said that he's been training, keeping fit. And it's a player that Levy fans were gutted to lose. Um, the rave reviews they've gave about him has been... I've not saw a bad word about him so far. They said that they, they think he could still play um, in the top tier. And I think just the, everything about the signing, we've been crying out for a right back to the announcement of the signing to... Even his interview and just reading stuff about him, it just seems like it's going to just, it can only be a positive thing. Um, he's just a general positive character. We're dying, we've been dying for a right back, we've got one in. That will allow other players that have been playing in that position to go to their more natural position, hopefully, and that will benefit them as well. So I just I just feel that it's, it's an all-round great signing and it's one that, we've been crying out for. I'm pretty surprised that Steve Lawson isn't someone that we picked up on both in the summer and in January for, for us to be thinking about that could be a logical option. Um, but it ticks all the boxes and yeah, it's a really positive signing in my opinion. I, I don't think you can fault it in any way and just seeing what he, how he speaks and seeing what a character is and how positive it is. Hopefully that will have a positive effect on the, the dressing room as well. I think he'll go straight into the team on Saturday, um, if not the bench. So, positive sign. Hopefully, before the end of the, the window, we can get a couple more in, and Morrison and McEnroy, and then I don't think a single fan can say any bad word about the board. Uh, the board says they were going to bring in players, they were going to dip into their pocket. They've, they've signed players already, and... I do still think that as a striker or an attacking-minded player, a forward, is imperative. And if we are able to bring in Mark and Roy and Morrison, the depth of the squad has been massively increased this window. And it gives us a platform um, going into next season as well, because as we keep mentioning, we're never ever planned for the season ahead. Well, you mentioned about looking to the future. There was a bit of discussion because of a transfer rumour that we've heard during the week um, that's getting linked with uh, Falkirk player Callum Morrison. Um, and it started a little bit of a debate about, you know, whether do we need another winger? Do we need this player? Shouldn't we be focusing on our other critical positions? And I think we should, as, as you've just said, a, a right back and a striker definitely are, are crucial. But David, is this the club looking ahead now to next season saying we won't have Kai Kennedy, we're not going to have Josh Mullen? Let's get this player in now. And as we criticised the club for previously, not being prepared for next season, is SM starting to do that by getting this player in? Aye. Uh, I think one of the first things we need to mention is something that Brandon said off camera, which we need to all remember is this is purely a rumour at this point. In the past, when we've seen stuff online, when it comes to ourselves and, and transfers, it usually actually does turn out right. Um, there's a small pool of supporters and someone kind of knows someone and will hear a whisper. So... Uh, I think it will be um, true. I, I do think it is planning. Um, for me, it's something I'm really happy to see because for as long as we've been doing the podcast and as long as I've been a Hamilton fan, I'm sick of seeing squad overhauls every season. Um, I, I want to see the plan ahead so that when we get to the, the start of a next season, like a team like Liverpool, you know exactly what their starting 11 is. You know what their best 11 will be. Whereas... We spend the first half of every season trying to establish a team and then it's not till near the end of the season where it's crunch time when you then start seeing what our best 11 is. We spend far too long um, in the campaign establishing a team in the first place. So going into a new season, knowing what your strongest 11 will be, would be great. So if they're working towards that, I'm all for it. And then the second part of this is, again, how often have we said 
go into a lower league, look at a player that's excelling um, at another team and get them. I think that this is very much exploiting Falkirk's current situation. They're going to be in League One again. The players will want to maybe go to a higher level. So, but I'm all for it. I think I think it's a good move, and it's someone we've all kind of discussed as well. We've all seen. We all know who Cal Morrison is. We've seen his name make the headlines, and it's. Another thing he add is when was the last time Hamilton signed anybody with any type of goal scoring record? Well, let's talk about Callum Morrison, Brandon. Listed, uh, kind of most commonly played out in the right, can play out in the left as well. Um, has played centrally, but dominantly on the wings. As David said, decent scoring record in League One seems to be stand up for that that poor Falkirk side. And as David said as well, it's, it's good to see the club dipping into the, the lower leagues, taking a player that's performed well, and hopefully he can make the step up with us. Yeah, um, I've, I've read a lot of comments on social media sort of comparing signing him to other players. I think I saw Tom Tybo mentioned, I saw uh, Calum Smith mentioned. I, just, I don't get the comparisons, if I'm being honest here, especially with sort of Callum Morrison. If you were to sort of, and I, it's a signing that if Aki's were to make, it's just purely speculation at the moment, that if you were to go and look at League One and League Two, out of all the players that in the two divisions, the the one that probably stands out for me is the player that would have the most potential and the player that you'd want a sort of championship slash bottom half of the SPL to sign if you're going to sign anybody from League One or League Two would be Cal Morrison. Still at a very young age, he's constantly overperforming for a very a team which meant, is meant to be performing better. He's been touted with moves down south to fairly decent sized teams as well. And he's he's obviously started off at Hearts. Hearts let him go to Falk because they didn't just they, they obviously felt that's a position they're always kind of gifted with Hearts. It wasn't quite at the, the stage they wanted him to be at. So he's went to Falkirk and he's excelled at Falkirk. He's he, he as you say, primarily plays in the wing, but he can play all across the sort of forward positions and he scores goals and he assists and he, he's, he's week in, week out. It's the player I always see standing out for Falkirk. When you're seeing people compare that type of signing to previous signings and different players, I just don't get it because it's clearly someone that they've got potential and they're excelling where they are just now. Players that we've sort of signed previously from this type of market, it's not players that have excelled mm. at that level. Um, and it's not players that have stood out. I think it speaks volumes that if this is true, like it's, we're just reading into rumours to be fair, and sort of grabbing onto something because we've got nothing really to grab onto. But spending forty k for a League One player, um, I think that, that that speaks volumes in its own. We are desperate for a right back. I were desperate for a striker, but the way in which Stan sets up, that would sort of suit your sort of striker mould. If we're be, like, sort of the setup we play, we've got Moy, we've got Ryan. If you were to sign him, you've got them. That, then have um, Morrison's option. You've got Andy Winter. We're not playing. We're not playing this high, high ball forward. We, we barely ever do that when we've got Moyo anyway. It, it's one that would be looking to the future for next season. It would probably hit the ground ground running if he did come in this season. But it's one that also adds on to next season. And as David says, it gets us prepared for a season because when was the last time we could say we're more prepared? We always say that. F- sort of failure to prepare is preparing if it fail and that's what we do every season and it's ultimately why we're always chasing our tail so fingers crossed this this is something that will come to fruition and it is something which we will see take place this week because I think he's got potential I, I can see him being a player that it will be a a stepping stone, I think we could make money from them. I think we could also take a bit of the pressure off of Lou Smith and Marley Redfern as well. Obviously, they're still young players. I know we put a lot of pressure on Lou Smith because obviously he's a, one of our own in that, but he's not been performing well. Marley Redfern is still very, very young and getting played nearly every game. Um, it could potentially, in my opinion, take a bit of the pressure off them. We're not always looking to these wingers uh, to create the goals, and we'll have another option as well. I, I- I to anticipate that they will try to mould him into a striker. When we did go up the last time, the options that we had in areas, so if that's another quality option, then that's only going to help us if we are serious 
about trying to get out of the league. In regards to people's comparisons, I mean, every individual is different. We know that. I mean, when you compare with guys like Tom Tyro and Keelan McKenna, at the same time, you can look at Tony Andrew and Ross Callahan, two completely unwanted players when we got them, and look what they turned into. So I, I, I agree with Brandon. I think this guy's got huge potential. I think if we don't get him, someone will, and I think he will be one of the ones... Like when Kevin Nisbet go from Wraith to Dunfermline, they think he will make that step up. And you never know if he could excel in the championship next season. He's around better players and a better team as well. Falker Karames, not saying that we're much better, but um, I, I think it'll be something that I think he his potential will show uh, when he makes his step up. So I, I, I'm quite excited about it. It's, it's the type of signing that we've all asked for. And we've never really made so I, I think it's something to be excited about granted it is true but like I say I, I don't think that kind of information just comes out of nowhere when it comes to teams like us we don't get linked with guys left right and centre um, very very rarely so I don't think this would have just appeared out of nowhere this is something that's just came to light yeah, now this is the name that we've heard this doesn't mean that we're not looking at a right back and another striker or any other players. This is just this is just the first instance where something's been out. So this doesn't mean that they're not looking at other positions. So obviously when you see fans' reactions on Twitter saying, oh, good, but it's not what we need, that doesn't mean we're not working on something else as well. This is just what's came to light and what's got out there. So there, there will be deals um, getting done in the background as well. well. I hope there will be. But this doesn't mean that we're prioritising something else. This is just the one... That we've happened to hear about as well. It is really important though, and I, I'd hope that it does, doesn't hinder us because you think the club, I, they might be being proactive with this sign and they are looking to the future. And I think it is a really exciting sign, and if it is to take place and it is one that it can do, it, if it happens, then both this season it will have an impact, in my opinion, and next season it'd have an impact, and it means it's better prepared. But I would just be, I would be wary that. If you're signing a player for forty k, and you're spending money on him, and he's going to make that jump up, you'd think that he has been sort of offered elsewhere. So you would think that the wages he's getting wouldn't be that low as well. I would just hope it does doesn't hinder us for a right back and a striker because I do think it is really important that we still go and sign these players um, this window so that we can secure safety. In the in that position, I mean. We're going to be losing uh, Kai Kennedy, obviously. Josh Mullen goes back to Livingston. So, realistically, winger-wise, we've got Marley Redfair, um, Marley Redfair and Lewis Smith. Andy Ryan gets played out of position. So, that could hopefully eliminate the need to play Andy Ryan out wide, get him back centrally. Um, I reckon we'll also, just again, for the speculation, I reckon we'll also see people like Kilman Rowe go as well. So, that opens up a space too. So, I'd be very happy to see Callum Morrison. For a lot of the same, I don't want to go over it again, but for a lot of the same reasons you guys have already said, divulging into the and that although he's taken a, a player with good potential and performing well, that was one of the things for the comparisons you guys spoke about, Tom Tyro, Keaton McKenna, and Cam Smith. These weren't players necessarily performing well. Keaton McKenna was okay in a really bad Falkirk back line. Cam Smith didn't have a great scoring record, and Tom Tyro was consistently in the team, but did he perform very well? No. Whereas this, Callum Morrison is playing consistently and is playing consistently well and showcasing himself in the lower league. So I, I understand people comparing it to that, but I think there's two different calibers of players. And I think Callum Morrison comes in with a much better um, pedigree and a much better background. And as Brandon says, if we get him in this window, hopefully kick on for the next, uh, for the second half of the season, get properly bedded in and then he's ready to go for next season. Think, and I think... Just to finish up on this as well, and I think David briefly mentioned on it, it's quite refreshing as well, and you don't want to sort of talk down on people's dem or clubs' demises, but if, I, if it is true and Aki's are sort of went in with a bit of 40k, then it shows a different approach completely to what we're, we're used to, because as David says, Falkirk have been in League One for a while now. If they don't work this season, then they're going to be struggling massively. And the fact that the club are actually proactively looking and seeing, well, look at this player they've got. They, if, if we put in an offer here um, and actually give them money for this player, then 
they're going to need to accept it because of the situation they're in. Quite refreshing to see that, um, if I'm being honest with you. So, I no, um, if it is true, it's completely speculation, and we might be, we might have just spoke for twenty minutes about absolute nonsense. But <laughs> hey ho. Well, let's talk about the game at the weekend going into play air. Now, what I said previously in, in previous podcasts is we're in this kind of middle ground of where well, there's a gap between the top half and there's a kind of gap between the bottom half. That bottom half gap has been annihilated. Uh, results haven't gone our way. There's now just three points separating us in air. So this game, again, uh, is so, so important. Own kind of mixed form. Obviously, we're, we're, in, we're in fairly decent form. Lost over our last game in Berman. Air I think in the last five games have two wins, two draws and a loss. Um, so they're also performing quite well. So I think it'll be a tight game, but I think we will see improvements in the team. I think we'll see Scott Martin back, Lewis Spence back as well. So that hopefully shows up in the midfield a bit too. Um, I think we'll be going to, to, to put right the result against Infermline. I would hope we would be anyway. So I can see this being tough, but I can see Aki's, uh, Aki's win this one. The, the only kind of positive is the the fact that we've had such a long break in between games. So I'm hoping that our midfield is going to be night and day with guys like Scott Martin and Lewis Spence coming back into the team um, because that was really our weakness um, against the Fairland. Absolute no strength or composure in there at all. Um, other than that, like you said, we have been playing well. Um, that is something that we really need to pick on me, I think. The Dunfermline result will show that, listen, like we've just said, we're not out of this yet. So hopefully that is kind of about up the arse that we need because this is a game that we could quite easily win and we could win comfortably. But if we go into it believing that, like I feel that we did at Dunfermline, then they could quite easily take all three points, promise. I think um, <laughs> it's going to be me bringing them up, but... We didn't have Moyo against them, Fairmont. We've got Moyo back this game as well. Um, no, he say he's off. I had to bring him up, obviously. But <laughs> we, um, the games in which we were, like our drain of form did change. Is Moyo was there? Do you know what I mean? Um, I against them, Fairmont, where we completely went, we lost the game. Was the midfield? It was clear we could run over the park because how lightweight, how lightweight and powder puff that that midfield was it was may as well not having a midfield but it's as you say hopefully we've got a lot of players back I think the break would have done as well um, hopefully after the Dunfermline game that means that they've had a, a long break they've been able to sort of recoup together um, sort of look over things realise that what's went wrong it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see why we get beat that game make sure that we don't we don't sort of go in with that sort of mentality and we don't go in with the same sort of lineup um if possible if people are back and I I just think it's going to be a really hard game because it's really a six pointer. Um majority of games will be six pointers uh from now on in until we if we're, we're able to sort of create create a wee gap again. But um air will be up for it. They'll be in the same mentality as us if they can win their third back level points and it's, it's a fair game for them in the league but I just think hopefully that after Dunfermline and they did go in the, the training ground they've been working on a few things hopefully got a few players back and we can just go into the game and just go for it I think I, I agree with you what you said about the midfield that's where we lost that game which is why I think it's really important that Martin and Spencer are back in now we've seen photos of them training so it looks as if they're at least getting to that that place where they, they could make an appearance, whether they're bad enough to start. Or, I don't know, but I'm hoping that having the week off has helped them build that back up and we'll see them start because um, we're a much stronger team with those two in, uh, in that team. And, and as you said, that's where we'll lose the game. I also think we'll see Moyo come back in as well. Gutty, they never played at the, the Cup of Nations. Uh, Gutty never even got a chance, but um, I, I do agree. I think we're a better team with David Moyo in it. We're trying not to do the long balls up to him. But he also does give us that option where what we struggled with against Infermline was because they were putting us under so much pressure, when we then pumped it long, Andy Ryan and Andy Winter are not going to win you most of the headers, whereas David Moyo would hold up the ball and take the pressure off. Um, so I think he will come straight back into the team. And as I said, I think he has a better, I think we are a better team with David Moyo in it, at least at the current time. Touching on the midfield situation, um, back to the old sort of, you don't want to rush. I know yeah. where that position, where 
we kind of do need them, but you don't want to rush them back and then be back to square one again. So hopefully week off is sort of bedding them back in. I wouldn't rush them in if there's going to be sort of repercussions to them coming back. Repercussions or slight doubts in them, don't miss them. But if you're able to maybe even play one, then I do that. But I just feel like, yeah, with regards to the midfield, it can be Mamno and Hughes again because you, you, they'll just run over the top of us. Um, and it was their, their manager would have done his research, would have watched the Confirmation game. I think anybody watching that Confirmation game can see where that game was won and where we ultimately lost. Do you think with Moyo back, do you think he will go back to the sort of the setup that he had and maybe maybe have Ryan as one of the wingers or do you think that he'll stick with Winter and Ryan up top and sort of keep change his system up to what it was against Unferm or do you think he might even have Ryan and Moyo up top with his system think, being different as well what do you uh, think we'll, how do you think we'll set up I think it'll be Moyo and Ryan um, I think Winter is completely ineffective um, you need that kind of physical element if you're going with the, the two Um I think you also, I can see Kai Kennedy um, start as well. I think it will be Redfern to lose his place. I think, the, um, personally, I would probably take Smith out. Um, but I think, um, on your question, it will be Moyo. Um, we'll be back, and I think they'll go for the two up top. Yeah, I think he's, because of the players that have been out, I think he's been forced to change that system a little bit. Where, you know, we criticised before where when players were out, he stuck with the same system, and you could see it wasn't effective because those quality players went in there. But I think he's kind of noticed that and is, it's forced his hand to change his system. Um, but when the players come back, I reckon he'll revert back to his tried and tested kind of 4 3 3, if you want to call it that. Um, so I think we'll see that. Um, Brandon, something I want to ask you about, it was just came to my head there, David and I were discussing it, is Keira McDonald. You know, she hasn't necessarily been performing poorly. So does Keira McDonald come straight back yeah. in the team? Million percent. Million percent. Yeah. I said to him, I, I, I've got nothing to base this on. It's just a feeling that I've got. i got a feeling that we will lose him in the summer. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't be surprised if um, McDonald did go in the summer as well. But um, I know you're saying Shields isn't performing poorly, but then firmly he was wrong. He was. Um, I, um, against Ock and Lech, he was rotten. I, two games in between that, he was... He was all right. He was one of our better players against Queen of the South, but that was against 10 men. Practically having to be on the park had a really good game. Um, I, I just don't see why you couldn't. I know McDonald has not really hit the heights what we're expecting him on this season, but he's a he's a much better all down player. And I just think it would be um stupid not to have him um, back in the team because uh, he's he's a better all round left back. Yeah, and I trust him a lot more as well. All right, well, listen, let's get our score predictions in then. I tallied up the the league predictions kind of mid-season just to see what we're hitting it. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> we are not doing very well. <laughs> so we need to get some of these right. So, uh, David, I'll come to you first then. Uh, score predictions for the weekend. I think this is a really, really tough one. Um, because like I said, we could quite easily win this comfortably and then quite easily get blown away. So I'm going to, again, let my optimism take over. I think with the players, when, when you look at what that start 11 could potentially be on paper, it shouldn't be a question. No disrespect to United, but with the players that we, I mean, we should have what Josh Mullen back, maybe Scott Martin, um, Jamie Hamilton's on the part, Lewis Smith, Kai Kennedy, Moyo, and Win, uh, Ryan up top. We really should be doing better. So it needs to start somewhere. So hopefully this, this coming Saturday. So I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm going to go with 3-0 win. This is why you don't do well in the league day. I know, I know. But see, to be fair, <laughs> if, I, if I get this right, then I'll take it. I'll take getting them wrong every other week. But I'm looking forward and hopefully, um, like I say, it needs to start somewhere. Similar to David, I think like on paper and judging by the players that we know we, we have coming back, as David says, no fucking disrespect to air, but We've just came down for the top tier for seven years. The players that we've got there, the players returning, it should be beating Air United. Um, regardless of Air getting a new manager, um, player to player, well, um, we should be a much better team. We should be comfortably winning this. And hopefully, after having a given 
they done firm the result. Hopefully they've kicked them up the arse. It's made them fucking realise that it's not um it's not, not secure and we're not safe in the league. We need to sort of we should be looking up, but we need to start getting results and start being more consistent. Uh, having said that, I'm gonna go three one Hamilton. All right, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish the the trio off by also being confident. Um, I do think Akers will win this. Um, for a lot of the reasons Brand said already, the players that are coming back and and as David said, on paper we do have a stronger squad. I don't think you know make it an easy game. It definitely won't be it won't be a pushover or anything. But I'm confident Akers will have a bit of a response. So, um, I'll I'll go two one. I'm not quite confident enough to say three 0 or three one, but I'll go two one Akers uh, as my score prediction. But thank you very much for watching. As always, you can leave your score predictions in the tweet down below to let us to get involved in the league table. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again soon.